Right, so today's video has come about because of a question that was brought up on my YouTube channel. It's quite a good one actually. And it was asked by NutriFit. And he says, do you have a box or a cold air feed to the ITBs? It seems like a ST170 engine bay will choke those ITBs and after a while lose power. How do you address heat soak? So that's what this video is going to be all about. How do I address heat soak? Let's get into the video. Okay, so the way we're going to run the test in this video is going to be via the, can you see the inlet air temperature sensor there, which is right by the throttle body. So rather than any guesswork, we're going to have proper, proper data that's going to show the inlet air temperature sensor. So what the plan is to do is to get the engine bay hot. Um, then we're going to go off and drive and we're going to monitor the temps and see how they come down. How I'm feeding cold air to this is through the scuttle area here, um, my back is cut out here. Um, I'll explain the theory on how the uh, cold air gets there when we get going in the car. So right, let's get on with the test. Okay, so I've just started the engine, so we can see we've got a coolant temperature of 10 and an intake air temperature of 7. So when we drive, the main gauge we're going to look at is our intake air temp and we're going to see where the temperature gauge is reading. So I don't think we're going to get down as low as 7 when we drive in, but it definitely will drop and I'll explain. Okay, so we've got the car nice and hot now. Uh, coolant's at 88, um, the air intake is 39. Once it's 40, we're going to drive and then we'll see how it comes down. So I've been parked in a lay-by revving the engine up, trying to get a real load of heat under that engine bay so we can run this test. It's taken quite a bit of time because it is an efficient um, placement for the, for the throttle bodies, which a lot of people don't realise. So it does get a lot of cold air and actually trying to get it hot under there while I was driving, it's just it's impossible. So we are, we just flicker in at 40 degrees now. So we're going to drive and then monitor what happens to the temps. So you might be wondering why, how is it an efficient place to, to get cold air? Well, you may think that it's, it's sucking cold air from the, the scuttle panel area, but it's not, it's not just a case of, um, of that. The scuttle area is what's called a high pressure uh, zone of air. So air is actually getting forced down and pushed past the air filter and the throttle bodies and then it exits and exits under the car. It's not a great thing in theory for actual aerodynamics of a car. Um, you don't really want air, air coming down from above the car and then exiting under. But in this case to get cold air to the throttle bodies is a trade-off that, that I'm willing to take really. And also you the air intake for your cabin vents is always at the scuttle panel is because of the high pressure zone. Whereas the, you sometimes you'll have your vents off and you'll still feel some fresh air blowing into the car and that's because air is getting driven in. It's the same principle with the throttle bodies. The, the cold air is coming up over the bonnet and then getting forced down past the throttle body. So I'm doing 50 mile an hour, we're just coming up to around about now. You can see we've already dropped for 4 degrees, we've only been driving a short distance. And to get it up to 40 degrees in temperature wasn't easy. It took a lot of revving and starting still to get the engine be that hot. So it shouldn't take too long, you start to see the temperatures coming down. we see the effectiveness of the placement. I say the effectiveness of the placement of the front boys, I had no choice in where I placed them. They had to go there, it's unfortunate they're at the back of the engine, but you've got to work with what you've got. So coming down now, 35s, 34s, and I'm just doing a steady 50 mile an hour at 6 pm. And uh, if I was at track speeds where you'd be 70, 80, 90 mile an hour, you can imagine it would come down. Um, a lot quicker. There'll also most likely be some heat soak in the sensor because I've let the engine bay get so hot. The back plate to the, the throttle bodies is aluminium, so no 
but no, that is that is warmed up, so we might have to overcome some of the temperature that's going to be in that. But as you can see, it's working effectively. We're now down to 29, 28. So I think that was a pretty conclusive test. Like I say, that's that's the best that I can do to to run a test in this situation. But hopefully, it, it proves that it does work. That's how I control the heat soak. I'm not genius. It's just how aerodynamics work, and I've just used them to my advantage. So, thank you very much for watching this video. Hope to see you on the next one. Bye.